know already, Brother Romel had told you what God has done when we were there in the Philippines. And I can testify that God is with us. Believe that? Amen. Because every time we do something, we declare that He is in our midst. Amen. I will always ask them to sing the song, This is Holy Ground. This is holy ground. And as a doctor, I will not believe easily to people who will tell us something has happened miraculously. So I was asked to buy a hearing aid for an old man. And then when we were there, Brother Romel picks it up and put it on that old man's ear. For 24 hours, that old man was not responding to anything. But after 24 hours, and incidentally, the one that somehow was so amazed of what has happened came from America. The message telling us that the old man started to mumble. Amen. Uh -huh. And so immediately I said, maybe this old man has been mute and deaf from birth. Because if you are a deaf because of old age and suddenly you will hear, supposed to be, you will say, thank God I can heal again. But the old man mumbled and seemingly he doesn't know what to say. Meaning to say zero deposit in his brain by hearing. And then the young lady who was brought to me because she doesn't speak. And I said, I don't know medicine. I don't know of medicine that will make your daughter speak. But praise the Lord that we have that prayer team. And I told them, battle against the demonic force that kept this young woman's tongue become useless. After one week, Sister Arlene told me that girl that they had prayed for deliverance started talking and she was <laughs> Because that is my job. And today, my job is to really again rally you into this kind of faith. My brothers and my sisters, God brought us into a new venue. And the way it looks, even we have to let it, it is still in Tagalog, aalog alog. And Sister Marie was telling me there are still some chairs upstairs. And we can use that. And so immediately when you have come, I said in my prayers, and even in my challenge to every one of you, may you understand why Jesus came. Later on, I will tell you the truth, and many of you will get mad at me, because of what we have believed. The whole world is being played around with a lot of lies mm -hmm. that even the church are allowing lies to really be taken as true. And tonight, last night, I sent again another video on YouTube regarding what we are seemingly do not fully understand and hopefully in Pagata Center when if we are a church believing that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life that no one comes to the Father except Jesus Amen. except complying in his truth the church has been pervasively <laughs> allowing lives that somehow change our perspective as Christians. 
that my brothers and my sisters, you will think that you are Christian and you are good enough. Ben was singing a song and he was saying, Jesus have come. Jesus have come indeed to do a job. But he has given us the job to continue. And hopefully the World War III will not happen so soon yet. Because Putin is preparing the northern forces. And in the news he is developing that kind of missiles that can reach anywhere and be effective in destroying humankind. We are in the period that Jesus will soon come and he will only come to those who have done the job whether you believe me or not. In Matthew chapter 25, I will introduce you. Okay, Doc. the leader. 
years that you, my brothers and sisters, young and old, you should be being changed from glory to glory. That you have, like Brother Romel, hoped move out, stop being a child, stop being a mediocre, rise up to that totality of us that God is expecting us to really please Him. And again, I will say, the best that God is pleased is when we bring precious souls to Him. Amen. Repeatedly I say, the heavens rejoice. God sings and does just magic. Because every time we bring a precious soul to Him, He is seeing His family become one again. And so my brothers and sisters today, as I talk about the transformed living for people who have been transformed by God, I pray to God that you today, in the presence of God, and I am believing He is in our midst. I don't want to say again that the church is demonized. But just the same, if you are not listening, if you are not intending to listen, you are demonized. If you are doing something rather than listening, you are demonized. Whether you like it or not, the church is demonized. That's the reason why the seven churches that was described in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, five are the typical demonized churches that exist even today. They have lost their love, they have become lukewarm, they have become corrupted, they have become immoral, they actually have become dead churches. And I pray to God that we in Bagasa Center rise up and say to God, I don't belong to the five churches, but I belong to the Philadelphia church, Amen. where I am expecting God to open doors to me, because we have to build up this venue that is 750 precious souls in the sight of God, that the church will help to rise up into that maturity, that even whatever will happen, we will be standing and we will be unstoppable in doing the job of God. Amen. And so immediately, as a general church, let us be reminded that there are two standards that we have to keep. But it is not a G12, it is God's standard. God's desire is for us to become like Him, isn't it? And it takes process from new birth until we reach a point of maturity, like a tree, like an adult, a tree expected to be fruitful. An adult is expected to be doing right and good, especially pleasing God. And when, my brothers and sisters, we are transformed, truly are transformed, wherever you are, in your school, in your in, in, in your workplaces, wherever you are, they will notice the difference. And how I wish we will be influencing a lot more people, because God is still taking His time. But I don't think it will take longer. Though 2 Peter 3.9 is telling us, G12 
Jesus is not slow, slack, and sleepy about His promise. But He is long suffering because there's a lot of people perishing. While the Christians are lazy, complacent, just go for the party, for the dancing, 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 without actually bringing those precious souls you have brought into your practice. Last night we celebrated supposed to be a Christmas party. And there were only, I think, two precious souls who have come as an invite. But anyway, there's still, I said last night, there's still 14 days for you to take your challenge, my brothers and sisters, as being the transformed people living a transformed lifestyle and a transformed lifestyle is someone who aggressively are telling people about Jesus. And so my brothers and sisters expected of those transformed people who are showing their life in a trans, in a transformed lifestyle of living that we will be so easily influencing people that resource to multiplication. Not multiplication of the center, but multiplication of people surrendering their lives to Jesus. Surrendering their lives to Jesus and being processed, not being left behind. That's the reason why we have self groups. We have children's ministry. We have the G12 equipment in class. So that we can help people to really rise up into that level. Level of faith, level of labors regarding love. And then, my brothers and sisters, we will be shining as brightly shining beacon of hope and the people around, the hurting one, the lost, the angry one, the sick, the poor, and so forth and so forth, will just be attracted to us. I was mentioning to the Dublin people regarding the four lepers. Just imagine the four lepers are a picture of the castaway people. They are, they are unwanted people. They are supposed to die any time, people. But in second Kings, I think chapter 7 talks about them. When there was famine going around Jerusalem, because the Philistines had surrounded them, the four lepers who are useless to most of it, went their way and said to themselves, Anyway, we are dying. If they will kill us, what can we do? But if they will give us food, then that is extension of life. That when the story went on, the four lepers, they found the three cities, territory, or the, the place where the three cities were gathered, abandoned. And the four lepers enjoyed what was there for their taking, Food, whatever treasures, and did they have enough? But praise the Lord for the four lepers, they still have that conscience, that attitude of remembering others. <laughs> and they said to themselves, How about them? Despite of them being this life, abandoned, forsaken, driven away, but they still have that heart to tell them about the good news. And the good news is about having again those food on a farming street in Jerusalem. And I hope you see the picture 
for us, for us as the people. If the leopards had this kind of attitude regarding again bringing in the good news to others, how I wish, and we are not leopards, we are all able bodies. What stops us from doing the job to bring the good news to many people? My brothers and sisters, I hope you review Second Peter chapter 7 about the four levels. And may God move in your heart to steer you up. That this that we are to be talking about is really very important. Alright, do you understand about the G12 standard or God's standard? So let me ask you to join me in reading Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. And I have it there, and I hope you can see it. And we will read it in three translations. So in New King James Version, it reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <coughs> NLT. The new living translation says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I pray with you to give your bodies to God, because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind you will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't come to the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. By changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The Amplified Version. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, meaning dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice holy and well, pleasing to God, which is your rational, meaning logical, intelligent act of worship, and do not be conformed to this world, meaning any longer with the superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually, by the renewing of your mind, meaning focusing on God and ethical attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. <coughs> and so, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, start with the 10th four. Meaning to say, Tarana, let's go, let's move on, let's do this. Bakara, the book of Romans, the first part of it, chapter 1 to 11, are called doctrinal. They are theological. And the second part, from 12 to 16, is all about Christian living. And I hope this is not foreign to you or maybe this is the first time you have read the book of Romans. So let's dissect what are God's principles regarding the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans. And for you, first timers, I always will say to people <coughs> that I engage, that are practicing a religion, 
that is out of touch of the truth of God. And there's plenty of religion that tells themselves that they are Christian. And this is precisely why Martin Luther abandoned his faith, the initial religion he was in. Because when he read the book of Romans, he immediately was able to write the 50 theses that is being talked about. When you read, basically, if you're first time the book of Romans, and you have an open heart and open mind, you will find yourself who you are. And so, my brothers and sisters, the book of Romans is beginning is all about faith. It's all about faith. Pananam palataya. Meaning to say we have to believe even if we do not see. We do not touch. Faith is the substance of what we hope for. And the evidence of what we do not see. We do chapter 7 verse 1. Just imagine you and I have not seen Jesus, but we celebrate his birthday. Isn't it? You think he was born in December? Later on you'll find out he was not born in December. We have to believe. We have to have that faith. Like for example, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's all about faith. It's about faith, believing in God, who created all, who owns all, and sustains all. Faith that we tell you and I to be subject to the God who created the heavens and the earth. But of course, that was not the story that we know. The first perfect creation of God, A and B, were created in faith by God to become holy and righteous. But God is so good that He gave us the way to decide. And we know the story. They were not able to maintain the holiness of God in their life. And when they receive, God who is righteous, He is also just. Umalpaka by katapaka in English. You fail. And there is something that we address so many days. God's wrath against unrighteousness is really evident. We forgot to say that people we read and we do our people. And there's plenty of reading that will tell us how the chosen people of God were so chastened by God. Jason even to be enslaved for 130 years. It didn't pass more than 200 years, then they were again under the subject of the four kingdoms, the Babylonians, <coughs> the Medo Persian, the Alexandrian, and the Romans. Just imagine. And then in the recent past, the Holocaust. The chosen people of God. And we, the Christians, the adopted children of God, the adopted families of God, we go through many difficulties in our lives without you maybe noticing it because of the unrighteousness that we live our lives supposed to be in holiness. But God is good. Amen. God is good that He has to become human. He has to become human 
not to be a permanent baby. But he went through adult to 33 years old. So that he can pursue his mission and die on the cross. So that you and I will not be in that wrath of God. But be in the mercy of God. That's the reason why my brothers and sisters, when Jesus came into the picture, who is the risen Christ, then those who have believed, it has become a gift. My brothers and sisters, that's all about the gospel in the book of Romans. And I hope you know that you have to know that to understand so that we can really decide to live our lives as transformed people living in His holiness and righteousness. And if we are truly are living in righteousness and holiness before God, going after the Lord should be very easy. Because if He is, and we, and He is, the Holy Spirit in us, that tells us greater is He who is in us than all the powers. It makes it easy for you and me supposed to be to go and tell people about Jesus. But the church has become lazy, complacent, unresponsive to the point that we are hopefully not characterized as dying church. That's the reason why the whole world, the Western world, are telling us God has died. There is no more God. He's finished. That's why all these relative, relative, relativism and so forth and so forth are now replacing God because there's plenty of Christians supposed to be acting up, rising up in faith, rising up in the power of God, rising up as people who are bringing people to God are not that knowledgeable or have decided. That's the reason why today, my brothers and sisters, I, again, Paul said, I beseech you. In some translation, he says, I urge you. In some translation, he says, I cry to you. As if Paul was telling them, oh, you, have, you, have, you, you are this one, and you got to die you this one, and you're still sleeping, and you're still unresponsive. That's why Paul has to act up another acceptance. By the mercy of God, Magis in Kazana, by the mercy of God, wake up, rise up, he stop being a useful into the kingdom of God. The book of Colossians is all about we who have been in the past of our being in darkness, but now in Christ. That we should not be creating or trying to enjoy the world. In chapter 1 and chapter 2, but then he says, but you have to set your minds on heavenly things. My brothers and sisters, let's stop living our lives as human kind. Let's stop. Because God is telling us, rise up into that spiritual realm. In Tagalog, minahabol natin ng mundo. Trabaho ng trabaho. Pero yung trabaho ng Panginoon, hindi ginagawa ay ligis. We have been chasing the world. We have been chasing what the world offers. But what God wants us to do for the sake of humanity that we can bring them back to Him to have life as we are happy in enjoying our life. We use our lives more for the world, whether you like it or not. When was the last time you talked to someone telling them about Jesus? When was the last time you have brought a precious soul into the
opinion of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it's high time today I would like to ask you again as Paul and us the book that the Romans and today still asking us. Hey brothers and my sisters, young and old, present your bodies as living sacrifices. Sa Tagalog, magpagamit ka naman. In English, be of use in the kingdom of God. It's Christmas. And you went to many parties. And you have declared Christmas the birth of Jesus, but you are not telling people about the salvation being offered by God. You see it? Are we telling people? God loves you so much. He doesn't want you to perish. That's the reason why Joseph was given in man. Be born in grace. Go. And we. It's no longer our perspective to kill people, to capture them. Our job is to win people by his love, by his mercy. And so, my brothers and sisters, I urge you, I beseech you, I challenge you. Let us present our bodies as living sacrifices for Jesus. Year 2023 is up and coming, but I said last night we still have 14 days. Especially the brother leaders, we know all the strategies and techniques how to win people. The Bible is telling us pray for the Lord of the harvest, and we've been praying. But sometimes the praying is not enough. We have to go and tell people. Like the poor lepers, they have to go out even if they have to die so that they can bring a good news to the people. And the good news never changes. Jesus is still so eager for lost souls, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for those who have come for the first time. And I hope this is something that we really easily get. Or most probably you will say, I don't like this old man. <laughs> but this is the time for you to decide. Because this might be your last day. Or our last day. Anytime you feel, we will aspire to this mission. And I will always speak. United Kingdom is the first recipient of all these nuclear weapons. Amen. Whether you like it or not, that is what is going to happen. Amen. Russia has been defeated in the forefront. Now they are doing all those missions. <laughs> and one of the states, nuclear now. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's high time. Say to God, Lord, I think this is Brother Roger said we started together more than 20 years. Sister Marie, more than 20 years. Praise the Lord, what is He doing among us? He must be with us, isn't He? If He is not with us, we will not be growing this way. But He is with us. Be patient with us, especially for those who are always seeking. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, God doesn't want you to be left behind. That's the reason why every Sunday, every Sunday, or every gathering we buy, it's all about the sealing up love for God and love for the brethren. And then brother can declare that those who are walking in fellowship with the brethren and loving the brethren. Supposed to be, we are loving each other. But somehow I know this a little bit, just a little uh, deviation. Yeah? You know how young people, you young people, you dislike your poor young people sometimes. 
sisters, we have plenty of stories to tell them. Let me tell you very strong, I very important story. I have four or five friends. One is a classmate of medicine. We graduated in 1973. And then I have a fellow resident in training. He became the chief of pediatrics, a consultant pediatrician, a vice mayor for a town for two, two, two thirds. And I have a drinking party for a long, long time. All his brothers died of COVID, except him. And he has tuberculosis. And I said to him, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> and then one, one classmate of mine, who is very successful, money-wise, had become depressed. He became swollen. He cannot move. And he was just in the computer. But God prepared them. I did go to them to tell them again about the word of God. I just want to meet with them. Because I know that I have, I have bombarded them with all the testimony about the word of God. But one, the pediatrician said to me, Good boy, I cannot understand why my friends are becoming born again. Just imagine that. In the right time, in the Kairos time, I was there. And when I asked him, Prof, do you want to be born again? He started crying. He is a big guy, a handsome guy. But he surrendered his life to Jesus. My brother and sisters, that brother of mine, my friend, who is my drunken man, drinking buddy. We still alive with tuberculosis. I went to him and I said to him, it's your time. And he surrendered. And then there's a student of mine in 1975. I was teaching in the College of Nursing when I was a new graduate of being a doctor. And she communicated with me in the year 2010 because she, she, she saw me in Facebook. But after that, only when I was in the Philippines, in 2022, she again messaged me. And now she has become a widow. And she really wants to join us in Mindanao. But she, she didn't make it because she has only three days. She cannot buy a ticket together with us. So I have to engage her. And again, it's all about the problem of life. And then Jesus. Presented and still received Jesus. Amen. You know, I told you all that you have to do is tell your stories. Tell what God is doing in your life. And I pray to God that you and I will decide today. For you, tell Jesus, I'm a 14 day Lord. Give me my friend and go there. Stop walking. Too much money already, brother. <laughs> With your parents. For you who have plenty of money, stop working. Go for Jesus. May I tell you? Decide. Amen. <laughs> Again, I will, I will, I will, I will talk about this. Remembering his verses. Remembering his churches. Who among you have received so much mercy from God? For you who have not received mercy from God, it's okay. <laughs> Stay asleep. <laughs> Stay on the spot. Complacent. And let's see what will happen to you. Even if you are very handsome, zero. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, 
We have received a lot of mercies from God. Amen. You're still there. You're still not killed by the holy, by the RSV, by the true, by somebody else. God is so merciful that He's trying to remind us, Lord, He's telling us, say, I'm being merciful to you, why do you not go and tell like the poor believers, they had mercy for those people who used to keep them around. You are never so useless. But when they got something, they remember, hey, let's try to do good to them. Number two, as you present our bodies as 
he being sacrificed to God. Remember, he did it first. He modeled it. So there is no reason for you and I to say, I cannot do it. We can do it, brothers and sisters. Amen. Because Jesus has done it. And you know what John, uh, John chapter 14 talks about that he said, you can do better what I have done. My brothers and sisters, you are able, capable, all that we need is to decide. And tonight, today, this afternoon, I hope, because by the way, we will not be meeting face to face in the whole December. We will only meet in January 2023. And how God will be so pleased with us that when we come in January, this will all be built up with precious human souls. For those who believe that God can use you in 40 days, make a decision and tell God, God, give me those precious souls. I will not just go and bring, bring them in. In Jesus of God, my brothers and sisters, we can do it. Amen. And so, it's all about what we desire of us. Only the true Christians who are set apart for the job will be acceptable to God. And I hope you understand that. We have been declaring, I have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Set apart for a job. To do unless you decide to present your mother's as living sacrifices to God as holy and acceptable to Him, my brothers and sisters, it will not matter, it will, it will not work. And so, again, I challenge everyone of us as I've been talking about faith, let's rise up of our central people in our faith journey. It's not a journey of faith that goes down, it's a journey of faith that goes up. It is a journey like a runner. It is a journey like a fighter. <laughs> and again, I will repeat, because I am an old man, and my model is Caleb. <laughs> because Caleb said, when I was 40, I worked hard for you. Now I am 86 years old. <coughs> Give me more territory to conquer. And I pray to God, my brothers and sisters, we don't remind and remain babies. We have to move on to becoming at least a toddler. A toddler. What's the age of the toddler? Three, six. Three, six. And E.J. Castro was able to recite to me his memory verses. Just see. E.J., and tell your classmate, tell your classmate, Jesus loves you. And E.J., when you die. Hey, Tanner. How about. I'm just going to start that Please, please, please. Please, please. You are no longer doctor, you are in university. <laughs> you are in the university and you don't talk about Jesus in the university. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Rise up. Rise up. There's a story of faith. Don't remain babies. Don't remain even. I need to care. Because we do care when that make it. Whether you believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, me to care will not make it if you don't decide to change your attitude, your perspective. That's the reason why the part two, verse two is about be not be conformed with the world, 
in the system of the world, even the church, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind by the Holy Spirit. And I pray to God that today, as we are talking about this, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, God is stirring you up into making a decision that you will have your mind be transformed. Even if it's just 14 days to finish year 2022. And another challenge for year 2023. My brothers and sisters, it's all about love. See? That's why we have to rise up into that labor of love. We know already what are the people to reach out. Again, I will repeat. Jesus said to his disciples, go to the poor, to the thirsty, to the hungry, to the widow, to those in prison. And these are the people, hurting people, angry people, lost people. We already have the identity of them. All that we have to do is to bring them something as an expression of love. My brothers and sisters, I pray to God that we in Parana Center will just be rising up in that level of love, our neighbor of love. You know that faith, love and hope will not fade away. The world, the heavens will fade away. But faith, love and hope stay. And so my brothers and sisters, let's practice, let's master it. Minsan, pangkasawa ka, hindi nagkakasuso. Paano tayo? How can we really achieve something? My brothers and sisters, we have to move on, rise up in our level of faith as a person, as a family, as a career person, as somebody who is servant of God. And there's plenty of servants of God here. And I'm believing the primary leaders are all servants of God. The same leaders are servants of God. And without you, maybe thinking, if you are a self member, <coughs> say to God, I am also a servant of God. Amen. In the self group, it's all about evangelism. Do you bring precious souls into your self group? Or is it all food, 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 singing, 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 dancing, dancing, TikTok? My brothers and sisters, high Move on! Move on! Let's move on! How I wish, and of course, God is telling us, hey, people, people, you disciples, you are the light and the soul of this world. Again, we will, I will repeat, you are the light and the soul of this world. Amen. That world. And I have been preaching from the first Thessalonians, second Thessalonians about the Thessalonian believers rising up so beautifully, brightly shining as people of hope. That Paul was telling them, even if I am not there, you are doing the job. How I wish God will be telling us. Oh, you have been influencing, lighting up the dark places in your community, that they are coming back to the light. My brothers and sisters, this time. Present your body as living sacrifice. And when you do that, it is the best worship. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 at the end, it says, And this is, in some presentation, your best spiritual worship. Wala ka panapanalo ang ating music spirit. You bring souls. Even if you don't know how to sing, brother, God is this and not God. Amen. And so don't be complacent.
innovation it just becomes part of the new city you see city before you think you are doing the best singing so to the lord but that is not good enough my brothers and sisters again if you will dissect and i believe this is dissecting in long time ago the sense the will of god can be classified into good into pleasing and into perfect will of god god's will for children like kids and my grandchildren maybe is for them to be able to do good even by just standing their memory verse and people hear the word and the bible is telling us in romans chapter 10 verse 17 that time lambda lambda horas lambda horas 10 minutes past Worship.
Galatians 4 16 says, Have I therefore become your enemy? Because I gave you the truth. As your pastor, I always saw strong because that is my job. I have this strong conviction that I'm not playing around. I have received the mercies of God so much. And as if God is telling me, do not lose any one of them. That's the reason why I have to do this. Because when we were in the name, virtual, all the primary leaders of Moses said they were able to win their families because we cannot go out. And I want to be sure that those who are in their cell groups are genuine, true. And I discovered. I discovered there's plenty of them in the cell groups. They were only up there in the manna. They are here. And of course, of course, you must have terrorized them, you must have told them. If you do not join my cell group, no I need them. So I charge you, my leaders, go further. Let them understand. Let them really believe. Not only for the Ayuda, but for the health. Because I discovered that they were the one I saw. They don't understand what I was talking about. Though there's plenty of them who are really genuine. Praise the Lord. So my brothers and sisters, when we talk like this, this is because I love you.